Oh, Welcome to Bradensville. Hey. Welcome to Bradensville. Okay. Oh, well, you haven't seen the inside of the house yet. Yeah. No, I was thinking about a different place. I'm not thinking about this place. It wasn't this place. This is a cool place. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. You too. You hear babies already? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that is the house. So you just want to hang out for a little bit and you can come back up in about 10, 20 and we'll let you in. Okay, thanks. Is there a bathroom? Um, uh, okay, some by the gift oh. shop and okay. then um, oh, there's also one inside that building as well. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go by the bathroom then it'll be about time to come in. Uh, we can go look for a jacket in the van for you. Um, here's the keys. I lost it. Okay. Because her stuff is in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's, we'll go do that. Y'all going to go? You need to go to the bathroom? I'm going to the bathroom. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, Jacqueline. 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 Hey, Jac
Da 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 da. Okay, it's recording now, so go ahead. Man, this is guaranteed fresh. It's so good. So good. Thanks, supply chain. Hey guys, I think I seen the swine. Here, let's just go meet him at the car. She's got to get the baby out. Come on. Come on. Are you going to record it? No, you go ahead. You do it. Okay. I think that's the time. I should have worn my sunscreen. <laughs> hey! Hi! Hi. Hello! How y'all? We're good. good. How are you? Isn't it a beautiful day? Yeah. Oh, you tan? Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank okay. you. Are they requiring masks or we don't? Well, I'm not wearing one right now, but I was going to wear one like inside the house. Hey, Laura. Yeah. Okay. But I we haven't seen a sign. Okay. Hey, hey beautiful angel. Wait till you see Vesper's cute face. I have been thinking I about her wait. cute little face since the last time I saw her. That's cool. You got, you got, oh, you're shooting the camera? Oh, okay, Sarah. Here you go. You want to go get a shot of... All right, there you go. Here you go. Uh-huh. Is that Vesper's stuff or your stuff? It's my stuff. Also, um, I have these little straps. They can be a suitcase in my backpack. Look at my backpack. Cool. Right I on. know. Yep. <laughs> you look like a champion. Can you stick this in my backpack? Actually, even says so on your shirt. Can you stick this in my backpack? Keep filming. Okay. Winston wanted me to film. I would like to just go ahead and say I'm an adult who's not volunteering to carry that. Yeah, I'm not either. So. I'm going to be carrying Vesper. Right. <laughs> and look. Oh, you got it. You are backpacking well, like me. And if you can do it, then you can do it. Let's only have has one strap. What's in there? It's a tiger treat. Oh my gosh! I love that. Is that a tiger? It's a tiger treat in her bag. <laughs> tiger treats. I named the bag Tiggy. Okay. Does it like to bounce? Because the most wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things. And yeah. Tiggers are the really good at bouncing. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. And one of the most, and one of the most wonderful things about them is you're the only one. <laughs> That's right. Take the rolly card on. Yeah. You know, you can take the. Um, you oh, know, that's you cool. You can take. Heavy. That's cool. You can take the rolly part off. That's really cool. That's awesome that that removes. Where'd what a cool find thing. That? I love I, that. I got, it at, I got it at the zoo. Okay. Riverbank Zoo. That is really awesome, actually. Yeah, that's a, that and guess cool. what? They don't have any more elephants there anymore. All oh, the elephants are my favorite. They, have, they have rhinos in the place. I do like rhinos. They don't have and any elephants. What? That's what she said. And guess what? I feel like a few, like right before the Here, pandemic, they got rid of the elephants. Luckily, they, they, they something happened. Look. Okay, like their car is okay. coming this way, sir. Let's move this way and stay out of the oh, I can't wait to see little tiny Vesper. Let's say you see her. Let me look at her. Come on, let's come over here. We're about to get ready to send Let's come over here. We're going to send random people down here that nobody's ever look seen this before. Baby. Let's see you hold the camera. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to hold the camera. Okay. Sarah wants me to hold the camera and look at your child. Hello, child. <laughs> You're so cute. You got to get out of the sunlight. You you don't have enough sunscreen for all of that. <laughs> that. That girl need to get out of the sun. The week that I got it done was the week that it rained like eight days in a row. I just so look at that I couldn't smile. get any sun to take a good picture. I just kissed her. Aww. Aww. That's so sweet. When she's in her car, when she's awake and we're not moving in the car seat, she's she's louder than this. Really? Yeah, she hates it. Oh no. And one time we put a hat on her when she was screaming. Yeah. And she just hated it. She screamed and screamed and screamed. Maybe people definitely let you know how they feel about this. Yep. For sure. Did you want to hold the camera? Oh, yeah. I, I got Vesper's bald, beautiful I've head. Actually been able to, I've actually held her before. You got Aww. to hold her? 
Oh my god. You get gosh. to hold her. What was that like? I get to hold her lots of times. What do you, what do you think about that? So cute. It's like yeah. you're the big sister now. Watch out. Yeah. You know, Bonnie used to tote Sarah around when she was your age. Yep, she did. <laughs> like tote her around. Kind of like Sarah drags the cat around now. <laughs> the car Seems is so warm and the air is so cold. Yeah, I want your booty on. in my head. No. That's not Look at this, Miss Kira. Mm -hmm. I also have a hoodie on my shirt. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. You might need it. I, I feel like the top one. of my head's going to get sunburned. <laughs> I have a pink one of those, but it has like a tiger on it. That'd be great. Okay, we, we got some snacks too, like some extra like uh, we brought potato cereal. chips and stuff, okay. and we got like mini sprites and like some sodas and I'll stuff. I'll tell you what I brought. What? I brought key lime yogurt with a spoon. Mm -hmm. and I brought a Good so, job. Well, we brought some snacks that nobody wants to eat yet, so if you get hungry, let me know. I'll let you rummage through my bag and find something you want. Nothing brought drinks. Yeah, we got grape soda. And, oh, I'm gonna, shush. I might mention something somebody's not supposed to have. Do you want a mini sprite? No. Mini sprite? I'm good now. Look at that tiny baby! Oh, it was a little baby! Oh my gosh! Woo, I'm oh, tired like that too most days. You gotta just wedge a little bit. I be, I be tired like that all the time sometimes. I can't get out. Look at her little hands! Does she have a hat? It's chilly. I feel like I sound like my grandmother. <laughs> you gotta have that, though, baby. You gotta be warm. Oh, I like your JoJo water bottle. Oh, I yeah, do too. I seen it before. JoJo, she was awesome. I we seen love it before. her. She knows how to dance with her sister. Wow. Because there's no makeup. Well, she didn't do that. It's her brand. So she's getting it for her. Well. Her hand is cold. Are you cold? Okay, good. Your hands are See hot. how warm Zora dress? No, mm, it's not that cold. Well, I'm just throwing okay. this out there. You know, it's easier to take stuff off than wear it. Oh I've my got, gosh, she's what? so tight. I've got this, Sarah. If you want to wear it, it's Zora's hoodie. Did you want? A, you want Zora's hoodie? I do. I want it. Zora wants it. She's gonna stay super warm. You sure you don't want to borrow that? Because yeah, we were sure. looking for a jacket for you earlier and couldn't Guess find one. Guess what we could do together? Me and her could wear it like we're twins. Y'all could wear it. Oh, no, you could wear it like you're twins. Yeah. See, she's loud. Yeah, she's well, babies loud. have to be loud so they get their needs met. She needs something. You <laughs> yep. want the sword? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to put this here. Yeah, we only need to take your backpack off. Oh, yes, you can. I can set this. All right, now I'll, I, for most of these drinks, I just brought one of each. All right, so this is a mini Sprite, but there might not be another one for you. Mm. I, want to zip it up. I didn't bring a whole case of them. I brought two. One for you and one for Bonnie. Oh, yes. So you could have a mask in here. Listen to her little angel voice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Okay. Do you want me to open it? Yeah, I'll hold the camera. All right, you hold that. Where's my other strap? There it is. Cool. You might be shooting your hands. Camera. Get a good shot of your handprint. Hey. <laughs> now I can zoom in. A mom of two now. All right. I can zoom in. Oh. I am zooming out. I'm zooming out. <laughs> Time to now go. the day is over. Right. Did you want me to open this for you? <laughs> mm, nah. Okay. You want me to hold on to it for you? Yeah. Okay. I got, I'll hold on um, to it. 
some blankets for your box of meat. Oh, thank you. So thank you. Before we leave, <laughs> we need to give them. All right. What is a box of meat? Just to give people who don't have anything. I've got some stuff, actually. That I was going to drop off at O'Neill Church on oh, Saturday, that's a good but I, to... I just, I keep forgetting to do it. Yeah. No, I know. I've, I have a hard time with that, too. Let's All right. Go. Who's going to be the leader? I think Munson should be the leader. I'm not. I don't want to be the leader. Me and Sarah will. Oh, yeah. You, you, right. you. Politically, started. that doesn't seem right. Well, watch out for cars. I think right. someone else should okay. be. All right. Now, I'll hold your hand. Too. We'll all go together. Okay. How's that? <laughs> Are you hungry already, Tiggy? We just got here. Seriously. <laughs> Tiggy's all hungry already? Yes. Now, who has the tickets? That's who should lose. I mean, I did put his Well, head. I talked to the people, so I'll go first. Yep, they'll recognize you. They don't know who they'll I am. They'll never forget me. <laughs> they'll never forget me either, I mean, but still. She, I did pack her food. I did pack her food two days ago. Cool. So she's probably hungry. That's cool. So she, she hasn't eaten since... She was made. She, has, she hasn't eaten since she was actually even made. At least that's what she That's said. rough. Hello. And I just bought three more tickets from that fellow. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, you're good to go. Okay, thank you. Yes, can you tell me the bracelets and maps and everything? At that table? Yes. Okay, all right. We usually have to get bracelets. We usually have to get wristbands at the zoo. Riverbank Zoo. Also, guess what? They, luckily, they still have the koalas. Oh, I love the koalas. They're like my favorite. They have the koalas. I need one. She needs one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. All right. And then there is, and Blitz got the um, map. Oh, thank you. Can I have okay. two of these? I hope that they, um, I really, I really. That. Oh, there you go. Oh, thanks. How do, I, how do I put this Can you on? hold on to my mask? I'm going to hold on to your mask. Let me help you. Put it over here. The trash. Right, do you need help with that? Here. I'll just put the trash yeah. in it. Munson, how do I do this? Uh, oh, I see it. Hey, then you did. help me with this. Oh, I can help you with this. No, yeah, I actually don't have another skin. Don't tear it off. Oh, that's good. That, that, that's what you want right there. Is it too tight? No, Munson, there's like... A sticky part and I don't want it on my skin. Oh. It's like on my skin. Well, you have to put the wristband on. Oh, it's, it's real sticky for a reason. I don't know if I can take it off and put it back on, but I sure will try. Um, no, that's not going to Yeah, I don't think you this is going to work. You can't take it off anyway. You're not going to. Yeah, can we leave it on? Yeah. Okay, we're going to leave it on. You're not, you're not supposed I'm to. I'm sorry. Take it off. Let's just keep it like that. Well, we might take it off and then they go, You don't have your bracelet. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to talk to you about. Mm. You want to get the horses, Sarah? Mm, yeah. Want to get the horses? Oh, yeah. Look how pretty they are, Sarah. They're so pretty. They're just white. and They're just white with yellow tails and stuff. Or is that? I don't know what color. Okay, anyway, they're real pretty, aren't they, Sarah? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. This is a long giraffe. Oh, that's a big ant pile. Oh, Martin! That's a big a, ant pile. He's a step carrot! Oh, no. It's a fire ant pile. I didn't get any on me, though. Oh, look I, at all the sheep. Whoa, sheep. Did anybody bring some shears? Wait, where are the sheep? Over I there behind the gate. So, oh, my God. I see a baby one. Let's go see him. I think we're going to look at the animals. They look like huge horses. I almost called you sheep because I saw the sheep. I almost called you sheep. I almost called you sheep. Oh, wow. Oh, there's more than two babies. Oh, my gosh. Sarah, look at that big one out there. See those horns? Look how big it is. Oh yeah. It's a huge look at that. Lambs? Look at the big one out there. Oh yeah. It's a ram. It's huge. He's a 
He's a boy. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. Look at all the little babies. Aren't they cute? Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to cheer in today. Let's go see the horses. Let's get close. Come on, let's go look at the horses. Okay. Let's go look at the horses. And then let's go look at the pig. Oh, oh my gosh. They're feeding them. Look at the grass. You want to watch with the grass. I want to watch with the grass. Yeah, you, it looks like you can get on them, but I don't know if you can or not. Oh, gosh. They have covered up for wagons. Wagons? Yeah, that oh, yeah, they got all the tackle on them. Make like sure you can touch them first. He's all the ass. It's a they different relationship. Three. So he said that because they're in there working in the outfit, then we can't touch them. Yeah, that's... So that's my opinion, how I learned how to work with working with animals. Uh -huh. um, the other farmers whose animals is might actually have a different opinion. Yeah. So he might come home and be like, oh yeah, pet them all you want. Uh, I don't <laughs> agree with that. So but. fluffy, I'm going to touch them so, so it's The fluff might be a little discreet for they're a sweating. Like sweating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see they're kind of sweaty. Yeah. Trying to get a little nasty because they were just doing a lot of work. Yeah, they're big. So these guys are more in the almost range of draft animals. Not big enough to be full draft. Can they but see with those things over their eyes? Stay a little away from <laughs> yeah. Now this is a good team of horses, but you know, like anybody, you don't want to be surprised. Yeah. The number one place you don't want to be surprised is right back here. Right. And uh, yeah, that's not a fun time. I have some stories. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so they're a work and pair, so they are draft animals, which means they actively do work. So they like pull plows? And That's exactly right. Um, the farmer here was just doing some plowing out in our field. Wow. So these guys were hooked up as a team. So this is still an actual real farm. Yeah, we try to. Oh, okay. Yeah, another thing, after this, we're going to see the thing. Well, that's very cool. Yeah, they're right over there. The... Um, but I mean, just to tell you a few things. What are their names? Yeah, oh, like we Jim. have Maverick, you know, great, great name, and Jim. Oh, Jim. <laughs> Which I think is just a great name and for Jim a horse. Jim has the best tail. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, here's another thing. So one thing people who work with animals always do is they're always looking and always paying attention. It's minor, minor things. I don't know how much experience you'll have with animals. Any? Not working with them. Okay. Well. <laughs> Petting them, maybe. <laughs> it's a different relationship. Yeah. So, look how this guy's standing. Mm -hmm. Look how he's standing, and look where his ears are. Uh-huh. Listening. He's listening to me. Oh, yeah. Because, because I'm the closest to him, and I don't know. I, he he's likes me, I guess. used to your voice. Oh, I don't know these guys. Oh. These, I don't, I've literally never met these guys before. Oh. So this is another farmer who brought these in for us today. Oh. Um, but if you look at the other guy, he's just munch, munching away over here. He's not focused. Yeah. <laughs> so these are things that you got to really think about. So they have all these, these harnesses to make him pull stuff. Oh, look at the, between your blinders and your bit to keep him focused and keep him going the right direction. To your collar, which actually pulls the weight. And then these things called the lines that go out, which is where this goes. See these? Mm -hmm. See that little leather is? See, it actually connects to the bit. Out. Exactly. So the farmer says, you know, whatever command is for them to go, there's a lot of different ones, and you just kind of can direct them. You know, and it's a skill, it really is. They can always see straight ahead of those lines so that they don't get distracted by things on the side. Yeah. Yeah, it's can be really shy. That's, you're right. One of the, what I find is one of the funniest things about horses, even the biggest animals you've seen, draft animals, Belgians that are, their backs are like this tall. You like clap your hands, they'll freak out. Yeah. Also, don't, they don't like cats. That's true. They also, what I have found in my experience is the number one fear of horses, worse than death itself, is a tarp. Interesting. Yep. What's that about, I wonder? So they make a lot of knobs. <laughs> like a plastic tarp. Freaks them out. Yeah. Oh, the So, but, but at the same time, though they're pretty skittish about a lot of things, they also can learn. You know, horses can get so good, they can, you know, you can fire a gun right next to them and they're like, whatever. 
Wow. But you get a train. Yeah. So they take a lot of investment. Wow. Hey there. So. Yeah, there's a whole group of animals right over there. Let's move on to the pigs. All right, but we're going to walk this way. We're not going to walk behind the horses. Uh, uh, not yet, no. Thanks. Reason is because they're working yeah. right there. See that over there? Stop and ask. Little ones. Okay. Little baby ones. Like the other farmers, the horses are combined. Pigs can be next to the Somebody's buying. Yeah. Oh, Here's the, some buys. Did you hear the sheep? It's a baby sheep. Somebody got to say bye. Uh -huh. Where? Whoa. I saw it. Wow. Are you doing a wolf demonstration when we find out? I don't know. I hope so. I wish they were doing one. It says... Is, do we get to do flax smithing here? It says at 1.30 we're going to feed the animals. At 2.30 we're going on a Brattonsville site tour. And at 3.30 we're doing a traditional children's race. Awesome. What? I don't know if that means that you race the animals or you race each race other. the animals! <laughs> Race your parents. Run, run away. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to watch. I'm, I'm racing animals too. I'm okay. Spirit, we'll see. Do the, let's race. Race. Do you get to race the I'm going to
That's the three-legged baby. It's a three-legged baby. Courtney. He's got friends in big places. I think those are baby cows, too. This is the baby pen. Yeah. It's just some babies are bigger than others. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. True. of in this little brick building over here. Uh, but I need one of you to go ahead and start mixing while I'm pouring the water in. Bye. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So we're making corn cakes, and y'all can get a chance to make some if you'd like. Um, and we also have some of the receipts here on how to make them. They're also called Johnny Cakes or Plum Cakes. So if you want I'll some, cool. yeah, yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> and so you're going to mix that up until it's kind of like that. Um, it'll be a little sticky, oh thank you, it'll be a little sticky when you roll them up in your hands. But you're doing a really good job. You like it? How do you stick it on? I guess yeah. you can just use like cornmeal. Yeah, so cornmeal, flour, and milk. Um, is a really good way to make them and you can add whatever you want in them essentially um for myself i like to make them with cinnamon and butter in there as well oh, yeah but um some people you know make it more of a savory thing yeah this is kind of like fried cornbread after all so mm -hmm. let's see this is actually a really good consistency so what you guys want to do is take a little ball of it and you can fix them up too Oh, wow, they don't cut wood like that. Uh -uh. They don't have trees, trees to cut wood. Trees, yeah. Yeah. They don't let them grow that big. Well, you won't be able to try one. A lot of hands have been touching it, um, these ingredients. But if you wow. take it at home, then you can try it at home. It's really easy. As long as you have a skillet, you can make it at home. And you can set those there for this main. Almost two years now. Okay. Um, 
But I grew up in Rock Hill, so I've always known about Brightonsville. And yeah. I, you know, come to visit. And that's somebody else too. And I've always loved yeah. history. It's, great. it's nice to be able to do things as well. It helps for me. It helps me to learn better. To yeah, actually. for sure. So I feel like she's from. It'll heat up in a little bit. Um, we just came back from a shop on the road, so it's been a little time. But did y'all have Johnny cakes? <laughs> <laughs> we did. Sometimes I do make them for lunch. <laughs> um, not this time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, but if anyone else wants to try it, let's try it. Let's try it. Want to try it? I'm gonna try it. Okay. If you want to fry it, you want to watch. You want to watch? Yeah. So I have the special here, and it's still easy, but soon we'll have some more. There's some that tell you made if you want to fry those. Um, so first, you can make the balls with we'll Zora. Take, um, where is it? You can pour that in there. And then, do you want to help too? Mm -mm. No. Okay. <laughs> Take a little flour. Probably just doesn't want to get messy. Yeah, it is. It can Cooking be is messy. about getting messy. <laughs> and pour your flour in there. Everybody knows that getting messy is the best part. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> well, the eating um, is actually the best part. <laughs> and then, so while I'm uh, going to have you to mix it while I pour this because it's just a little heavy, and just a little bit of water to start with. And so basically, you want to make it kind of like how this is, and you can touch it if you want to see how it, the texture of it. Yeah, so we were originally supposed to do this outside, but we moved in indoors because yeah. of the wind. Yeah, I hear it. Poor wind. I don't know anything about wind. You're doing a really good job. So you just want to mix all of that in there. Because um, then, once it gets too nice. Yeah, so you're almost done. Um, and then you'll roll it to a ball, kind of like you would do with Play Doh, and then pat them down. And some people, some recipes do have eggs in them, so it's literally like a fried cornbread. <laughs> um, but this one's a little simpler. All right, let's see. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this in here, just so it's not too sticky for you. And your hands will get really messy. Hi! I'm still trying to clean mine. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm thinking. I need to get some water on Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. I may add just a little more of this in here just to, so it's not too sticky for you. And then if you want, you can mix that up. Scientific method of, yeah, let's see if this works. Yeah. <laughs> Make some corn cakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good demo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Does anyone else want to try to make one? I think it's time for us to go feed the Indian. Yeah. All right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I just held a chicken. You did? I haven't got a chance to see them yet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hold one. They're really fluffy. Yeah. I got to hold a chicken. It's very fluffy. Time. It is 1.29. Yep, it's animal time. We better run. That's kind of camping food, isn't it? To cook it over the fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to Shoulders, if you want to see better. Hmm? Oh, Miss Lane's over there. I know. Hey, Riley, what? see if you can scoot her up there so she can see. Hey, I really want to sneak up here. You probably oh, see. Here. Can you hold this? Sarah, I can get you on my shoulder. They are so excited that he's got that food. Look at that boy, buddy. Look at that boy. And he's here. I want to see one. I see one. I think we maybe get to. Oh my God, that one's going to happen. Oh. Because all the other ones are white except for that one. <laughs> they are so excited, aren't they? Here 
Brownsville. And to start with, what I want to say is thank y'all so much for coming here. You're welcome. Uh, last year we had to take a little break from this, and so it's so great to see your faces. And the reason why I do this is for all these kids. And what makes this program so special is I'm a dad, and this program we have here across the whole site is tailored to you kids. So that way you see activities that the kids would take part of. But one thing all kids love, no matter what our ages are, are animals, right? So right now what I'm going to do is we're going to go around to each one of these animals, tell you a little brief history on them and why we raised them here in uh, historic Bradsville. And every single one of these animals you see right here are typically what you would have saw in 1850s in South Carolina. These right here are very special to me. Uh, of course, this is Miss Margaret. Who's in needs to get a hand. This is a big crowd. There's your mama. Or Zora, Sarah. I thought we were too, but um, it looks like the farmer, the farmer's going to feed them. I thought we, I thought we. I did too. I'm disappointed. Well, it told a lie. All right, let's get a good spot over here. Come on. Get right here on the door. Yeah, there you go. You can't pet that. girls. Good job, bud. Well, here comes Excuse Margaret. Can I get by right quick? 
Sarah, here comes Margaret. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you. yeah, she'll she follow me everywhere. <laughs> Margaret has to be with Farmer Eli. <laughs> She's like Ariel and Pepper or with Daddy. I'll make sure there's room for you. <laughs> you want to go up top? Okay. Unfortunately, you don't. Let me know if you do. All I want to do is make sure you're safe. I think we got almost everybody here. Margaret, you gonna stay right there? What, her? No, she's fine. She'll sit there right there the whole time. I'll come up a little higher so everybody can hear me. This is a perfect example of a cow you would have seen in 1850. Now these two are steers, and what we'll do is we'll train them to be oxen. Raise your hand if you think oxen is a certain breed of cow. It is any breed of bovine, any cow. It just has to be a male and work. And that makes him an oxen. Oxen were extremely popular and necessary for early America. You know, when we think about the great expanse out west, you think about a wagon carrying with horses carrying you across there, right? Majority of wagons took it across the United States were oxen. And the reason why is because they have a great ability as far as their strength. They can pull three times their body weight, but also with their four-part stomach, they can you know, if you had to stop on the Great Plains or somewhere, they could forage off of any type of grass. Whereas a horse, a horse needs a more protein. So if you had a horse going across the Oregon Trail, you would have to bring oats to supplement that horse. So oxen were really popular in early America. Another thing they're really popular for is, if you notice all the buildings we have around here, they're all made out of wood, right? Well, we didn't have tractors back then. Oxen were used a lot of times to pull logs out of, out of the woods. And we still use oxen to this day because what we want to do is low impact forestry. So they'll bring oxen instead of heavy equipment into a forest, select cut timber, and that way it keeps the forest healthy and they're still able to get timber off that forest. Now these guys right here, they're crossbreed. In 1850s, what we realized is a lot of the animals were being crossbred for several different reasons. The primary reason was you might have a cow, but you don't have a bull, but your neighbor down the street had a bull. So you had to use what you had available. Another thing too is we know a lot of breeds were invented in the 1850s. And that was through crossbreeding to make a better animal. These are the perfect example. Their mamas are Red Devons. And Red Devons are, you know, if you look in historical pictures and stuff, Red Devons were one of the first cows brought to America in 1627. And they were brought to the Plymouth settlement here. And they were able to, um, uh, I got escapees. <laughs> um, anyway. So the Devon is the mom, but the problem with Devon is they have a lot of power, but they are able. But the problem is they're really spicy, meaning they have a, 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 a they have a nice attitude to them. <laughs> the Hereford, where they get the white face, where a Hereford bull was invented, crossbreeding. They made it in 1847 in Kentucky, brought over from up, uh, brought over from England, and those things are really good because they're very docile. So you take a. Uh, a Devon who is real strong and spicy, you take a Hereford that's real docile, you bring them together, that gives you a calm cow that is able to be able to pull a lot of weight. And so this is a prime example of here at Brattonsville what you would typically see. Now, for the kids and the adults, I strongly recommend you, this is spring, right? We have birds chirping, everything is coming back alive, right? So what do we think? We think about baby chickens, baby ducks, baby rabbits, baby sheep baby goats. What we have over here, of course, is we have different animals. And the first one you'll see is our goats. Then you go a little bit further down. You'll see our baby belly rabbits. Or you'll see chickens and ducks. Y'all are more than welcome to pick them up and, 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 and interact with them. You can pet them, hold them, or whatever. We encourage it. Because a lot of y'all don't have the opportunity to be able to hold chicks. So feel free to hold them as much as you want. And the ones you see here, of course, the chickens and stuff, <laughs> Like one of the most famous ones, the Brahmin chicken, because he gets almost, he can get 20 pounds, the males, and 30, 30 inches tall. Queen Victoria was gifted the Brahmin chickens in 1850s from a grower in America. He sent them over there. It was really popular. Next thing you know, because Queen Victoria had it, everybody wanted it. Much like our Christmas trees. They were the first one to put the Christmas tree in the house and hit the whole world through a storm. So, with these Brahmin chickens, that created a chicken craze, is what they call it, or a hen craze in America. At that point, every single one of y'all would want to have chickens in your house. 
And that's where we see a lot of the real popular breeds of chickens. At this point, can we go? What we do is we're going to skip this part right here. Are those seeds supposed to be over there? Yeah, they're fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're and at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to go right across over here Jeez. and we're going to meet Jeez. me in the pigs. Everybody grab a hand. There's lots of people. You want a picture? Or All right. you oh, the there's your mama. <laughs> All right. We're going to go see the pigs finally. They said something about what's three to hold bunnies and stuff. Well, we already did that. Yeah, let's give other people a turn. I don't Well, the lady that was in charge of the bunnies wasn't really passing them out, so... I think maybe we were supposed to just pet the bunnies. I want to see the bunnies. Yeah. Then we just looked everywhere. We couldn't find them. I smelled mud, but I smelled corn cake. It was over here. I smelled corn cake instead. I can't wait to go home and make those corn cakes. I want to try one as soon as I get to it. Mm-hmm. Watch out for mud. Let's see. I think... Let's go over this way. After he gets done with his talk, we'll walk back up that little table they had drinks and get, grab y'all a drink, okay? All right, here's the good spot down here. Zara. <laughs> There's a pig right there, Zora. There he is. All right. Where's there? Here's a pig right here, baby. These are fast. I didn't know they were that fast. Try to stand where everybody can see me and hear me. What do you think we have here? You think these are puppy dogs? Pigs. What are they? Pigs. They're pigs. And what do we get from pigs? Bacon. We do get bacon. We get sausage. You know, pigs were one of the most important things in early America. In 1850s, it was not a good time and era to be a vegetarian. <laughs> oh, these guys right here, your primary diet would have been pork. And corn. Yeah. And so pigs are yeah. extremely important. Yeah. Now, in early America, you used more than just the pig for the bacon. You know, if you see the hair on their back, they would use that for a sewing, a sewing needle. They would push the leather and use that because it was very pliable, like when they're making shoes. Also, what you can use with the hair on the back, does anybody brush your teeth? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Everybody yes, brush your teeth, teeth, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In 1850, yes. your toothbrush would have been made out of the back of the hair of the pig. Oh, yes. man. Yeah, because they use everything. Yeah. Now, I'll let you know about these pigs right here. Is this, once again, is a crossbreed of pigs. You can see Miss Minnie right here. Miss Minnie is a cross from Old Spot. Cross from the Art Shop. And if you see over here, this is a Hampshire Mule Spot doll. If you look at this, she only has one hoof. So if you see Miss Minnie, she has a split hoof. Going down the road down there, at the very end, he has one, one toe, so that's where they get the mule's foot. It looks like he has the mule's foot. What we'll do is, of course, we breed these things, and at that point, we can either process them or sell them to other growers. Finally, a set of animals we have are the big boys behind you, Jim and Maverick. Jim and Maverick are a set of Percheron horses, and what they use them for is horse flour. Remember I told you oxen was used for agriculture purposes too. Horses made it better because they can run faster. So when you're plowing a field, the ideal horses or mules can plow an acre of land a day. So we, as we evolved in farming, we realized that horses were our best thing as far as uh, plowing. Now Mr. Leonard there, that's his horses. Feel free to interact with them. And you know what he'll do of course is he'll do some plowing demos and let you see. And that is our barnyard tour. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all again for being here. Thank you. Schedule because there's multiple activities going on. Woo. Cool. All right, we're gonna go see the horses. You can also pet them now. You can pet them now? Yeah. No. You got
Do you want to get down? There we go. Get a little closer. Somebody wants to see the horses. I'm gonna help you. Come on. You don't want to pet Jim? This one's Jim. Jim doesn't like it. He's like pulling back in the field. Before our next activity, we have time to go look at the woodworking. Okay. Are you? you want to She's oh. cold. Yep. Let's, we can run to the gift shop and see if they got a sweatshirt okay. or something. That's cool. I also have this. She just wants to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, you want to wrap up? Here. Put it on like a dress. So just wrap up in it so you're warm. If you're cold, that keep you warm. Oh. Here, this will keep you warm. She said no. Oh, okay. Got a lot of well, we can, we can do that. You want to wear Mama's jacket? You want to wear my jacket? You might like Mama's better than mine. I hate we forgot to bring your jacket. Well, we, we, there was a discussion had and there was decisions made, so. Right. Here we are. <laughs> blanket. I got a bag full of blankets. All right. Do you want to go look at woodworking before our next activity? I want to work. I want to woodwork. Let's check it out. Let's go wash your hands again. No, that's good. You gotta clean your hands. And luckily, I don't have cornbread powder all over right? my hands. Right? I, I saw some red liquid hanging from his nose. The horse's nose. It might just be a spit or something. He might have been working earlier. And or, it, or it might have been like... Sweaty and stuff. It might have been snot. Maybe. You know, horses can't get their hands up to their nose, so they can't wipe their nose. They have to wipe it on something else. These are clean. You, uh, in the old days, when you wanted a board to work with, you took a series of planes and took, this is a jack plane. This is uh, for what we call scrubbing the board out, getting all the rough off of it. So I'll go. Exactly. You want to try one? Oh, wow. Oh, it smells so great. And once I got below all the mark, <coughs> marks and everything, then I would take this plane, this smooth plane, and I would go with the grain. You have to turn this part. I'll hold it up. And this is changing the grain here for the knots and stuff. And that would actually smooth. Can I try? Yeah, you can try. This is actually a 1915 or so Stanley Bailey plane that does the same thing that old one does. <laughs> Can I have that one? Oh, if you want to. Let me get a... You want to drill it? Well, you're the hammer for it. Right hand, left hand, and toe. 
Which one's the pressure here? Push a little bit of pressure here and push forward. You see the... the oh, wood, hey, wood, kiddos! Wood, is the wood coming up <laughs> in the hole? Yes. Oh, my God, this is so Hello, fun! Hello, Can you, like, want to swap? Yeah, you want to swap? Does she know how to do that? Oh, you did. Wait, wait. I think you hold that one hand. And hold one hand on that. Yeah, you can do it. And one oh, hand on yeah, that. I don't know how to work this one. So he said right hand here oh. and left hand here. Oh, okay. And then that one. So, yeah, and then that one there. And then push here and okay, push here. Okay, Charlotte, you need to get this Other people have a turn, okay? You're getting it. Yeah, there you go. Sarah, you want to try? Oh my goodness. You don't want to try anything? Yeah, I want to try. You want to use the hammer? I, I want to try. Yeah, I want to try using the hammer. Hey, I, want I want to try the hammer. I want to try the hammer. Oh, you want to try? Here, I'll trade. I think the hammer is the hammer. All right, good luck. Isn't that nice? Oh, Isn't that nice? That's it. That's it. I'm not going to Wow, this is like sandpaper before sandpaper. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah, they call it a plane. I'm not for allowed to touch the hammer. Wow, well, we're touching it. Long enough for some time. All right. I think you got it. Sarah, you want to try the plane? I am. Mommy wants to. Look at all those holes that have been drilled. <laughs> All Swiss cheese that I got. Here, you hold this. I'm going to try it. I'm going to drill a hole. I'm going to pretend like I know how it works. All right, ready? Here I go. I think you've got it worked out. You go the other way. Perfect. Oh, it's not that difficult. Says the lady who never has done an ounce of work in her life. Right, try doing that for eight hours straight and see how you like it. It's so much fun. I did it. I got three. Oh, that's cool, though. All right, do another one. How do I get it out? Uh, Which way was I going to work? The plane. So it's just sort of smoothing out the... That's uh, jet plane. Exactly. Jet plane. Right. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah, so do you uh, just go yeah. like this? Yep. And then turn it. Okay, so you're good. Exactly. Mm. Yep. No, and the other way. Other way. And then push down That's on it. top. Yep, there you go. There you go. Yep. It's clockwise if you're facing this way. I think I can make one hole a day. Then my arms are done. Yep. <laughs> you want to try? I did it already. That's my hole right there. Come over here. The little one. Ooh. You got the big one, Zora. That's going backwards. There All right, Sarah, you want to give it a go? Yeah, you can turn it that okay. way. Wow, that's a cool piece of wood. <laughs> what is this yep. thing here? Let me touch. What is that? That's a shaving that? horse. Oh, wow. oh. He's using one over here. Oh, okay. He can, uh, he can take and build, make pegs. Cool, thanks. What's that called? Oh, so That's the pegs to go in the hole. What a certain shape or size, I guess. You're not worried about it getting in your eyes? It doesn't really get up into my eyes. Okay. Wow, that's cool. Stuff like this, uh -huh. or you can put the pegs in here. You know, so it's nails, it's cheaper than nails, so that's basically why most likely a lot of things are I mean, it's pegs instead of nails. It's cheaper, and the process is a whole lot easier and shorter. Okay. So a lot of the furniture we have at home, instead of it's so old that instead of being held together with nails, it actually is held together with pegs. I'll show you something when we get in the house. I'm trying to think of something that we have 
I got some stuff. Two hands. He's using two hands. He's got it down to a science. That's awesome. That's so cool. Is that your kindling? Is that what you're doing? Pegs. I guess you could use the scrap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just really helps. Oh, sorry. You want to hold it? I'm gonna run to the gift shop and see if they got one. Oh, okay. I'll survive this sweater. I gotta get it. I'll work to nurse her anyway. When I get a chance, I am taking it. Oh, I'm just sitting right there. Oh, you're so close. I'll throw a blanket on you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to run to the gift shop and see if I can find a sweater, okay? All right. It's really cool watching you work, man. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Hey, Zora. You're going too? Okay, cool. I have one that Sarah mine gave me. Is, for I her. think mine is probably in my backpack. It is. Mine. Your, your grandma Mine's right in here. There. Okay. There's an extra one right here, too, if Zora wants one. She brought one. Okay. One. Bonnie? Uh -huh. Oh, you got I one. brought rubber spoons. Here you go. Have you done? I brought rubber spoons. <coughs> I, brought a I brought a rubber cupcake. Okay. <laughs> why does that not? Oh, I know why it smells like bananas. It was right on top of a banana. <laughs> That's yeah, why. That makes sense. Speaking of, I'm hungry. Bananas. I know, I am too. I got to find a little snack place to have a little snack. Yeah, yeah but I, like I have some stuff packed right. in my bag. Well, I'm there's a picnic table down here beside the gift shop, so we can have a little picnic. Sure. And I need, I need to eat my yogurt for a second. Okay. Clean up. Okay. Probably not cold at first. Well, if y'all want to go ahead and just take it, Campbell's going to eat, and I'll go in here and see if I can find a sweatshirt. Well, yeah, I want to go ahead and eat. Oh, yeah, good idea. Okay. I'm going to bring it to you. This is the right here. This is the right here. Oh, what am I doing? You're filming my backpack. following. You're filming my backpack. Oh. Right on. We're just following the children. It's okay. It's okay. They got some of the games over there, it looks like. Everybody's coming. Okay, I have bunny. I shouldn't have advertised it. But... Oh, by the way, I have bunny. Cool. I can support the gift shop. That sounds great. Oh, a rat! Yeah. Let's be mindful about, let's take in all our options here. Those are marbles, that's fun. They have great books too. You can each pick one thing. Oh, sorry. Y'all have like hoodies or sweatshirts?
the only thing we have is like Okay, okay. We might get one that's bigger and just let her wear it. She could double up and wear a few shirts. Yeah. That's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Look at this girl, y'all. It's so cute. Ella. Look at her. Look at her. Look at Alright. Sarah, tell me all about this house. Oh, what are we doing? We were it's at the monument. Oh. We were going where we were going. Well, it wasn't listed where it was going to meet. I don't know. Don't ever do that. Okay. Well, we were out at separate tour. Do you want to stick one of your fingers in my I guess they always close the road like this. Hey. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. It's a state maintained road. Oh. One time with the Bucker Brigade, Vidal signed us up to do some weird parade in some community that doesn't actually have a main street. <laughs> and so what they did, I forget where it was, they basically like closed off you know, like a mile of the street, uh, and you'd, you'd parade this way until you got to where you had to turn back around and march this way. <laughs> kind of like the kids on Harbor Street. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like we were just like in a circle. It was like. Are you sure? I'll just put it. It likely would have just been exposed long. In 1839, the Colonel's youngest son, a guy named John Simpson Bratton Sr., you want my blanket?
undeterred into the Carolina back country and a stronghold. In early July of 1780, uh, a British officer by the name of Captain Christian Huck, a notoriously cruel officer, uh, he was known as the swearing captain because he typically used the Lord's name in vain, which didn't sit well with the Scots-Irish Presbyterians who settled in this part of the Carolinas. He arrives at his house. He's looking for Colonel William Bratton. He is not here. He's about 20 miles away, camping with Thomas Sumter. See, after the fall of Charlestown, all the Patriot militias had organized under one man, Brigadier General Thomas Sumter, known as the Gamecock. Thomas Sumter's camping 20 miles away at the Catawba River. So William Bratton's not here when the British arrive. They were hoping to catch William unawares. See, this is the time of year in July. Uh, when this occurred, when the wheat harvest was being brought in, Thomas Sumter had sent all his men home to go help bring in the wheat harvest, and Captain Huck hoped that he could catch the Patriot officers unawares and arrest them while they're home bringing in the wheat harvest. Uh, he asks Martha where her husband is. She refuses. According to family tradition, one of the British soldiers takes a reaping hook that's used to bring in the wheat and holds it to her throat and threatens to cut her head off if she does not disclose the whereabouts of her husband. She again refuses, and if not for the efforts of who uh, is later called the Honorable Tory, uh, a loyalist, a British uh, uh, loyalist, steps forward and actually saves Martha's life. According to her son, William Jr., he beats this red-headed ruffian that's threatening his mother. He, he beats him with the flat of his sword and kicks him headlong down the steps of the porch. So this guy saves Martha's life. Of the house before moving on to the neighboring plantation of James Williamson. According to family tradition, prior to the British arriving, Martha sends a message to her husband by way of an enslaved African American boy named Watt. That answers your question. You asked me earlier, sir, did the Brattons enslaved people? They most certainly did. The first account of the enslaved man in Brattonsville is Watt. Martha sends a message to her husband in the care of this enslaved boy named Watt. My dad isn't here, so I can't get on his shoulders. Watt towards the Catawba River with this message for Colonel William Bratton. Bratton arrives the following morning with about 140 patriots. He surprises the British who are camping at the neighboring plantation of James Williamson. It is a massacre. The British uh, catch the patriots catch the British completely unawares. It is known as the Battle of Hudson Bay or the Battle of Williamson's Plantation. If you want to tour that battlefield, it's about a couple hundred yards that way. Uh, there is a trail where you can walk down on the original the battlefield. To give you an idea of how close it was, we will be shooting for bullets and striking inside the house as he and his siblings fight for the night in the area, and that battle is raised a couple hundred yards away. You can hear those bullets hitting the side of the house. So please check it 
out. It speaks to Watt's faithfulness to the family, uh, which would lend some credence to this story that Watt was sent with this very important message. Uh, so that, I'm glad you mentioned it. Because, uh, yeah, we have evidence. That's the uh, first evidence of enslaved person. Yeah. So the enslaved cemetery is about half a mile that direction. It is currently in the woods. It is part of our property. And uh, I'm in the process of trying to expand uh, our historic boundaries here on the National on, Register of Historic on. Places. And then that will better allow us to preserve that space. My goal is to eventually have that too open to the public uh, where mm -hmm. people can actually go down and see the cemetery. But it's currently not open to the public. But it's original too. Oh, does she have a camera? That's a But hopefully once we open it to the public, once it's on the National Register, I'll be able to protect it. That seems to be That's where it needs to be. Right, it does. Uh, but currently, it is it is being preserved because there was evidence of some vandalism going on. Um, any other questions? Great question. Thank you. Did you have a question? That was a great question. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Let's. Uh, if you think of any, raise your hand. Let's walk. We're going to walk right across the street in front of the homestead house. It's a really good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You need to stay with us. It's the recording. Okay. That's cool. He said, we're going to go across the street. on the plantation. Get him on the shoulders now. What? You get him on the shoulders now? Uh, yeah. Sarah, do you want okay. the blanket? No, no, no. I do want to get it. Okay, can you put it down? I can put you down. Well, you can get up. It's already good on your shoulders. Okay, you go I might have to take my backpack off. You look like you're heavier than Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm little. Just a little, huh? He's only seven. Okay, here you go. <laughs> He's kind of sweaty up there. He's kind of sweaty. It's fine on you. It's fine on you, Laura. I'll, I'll film. I'll film with the camera. Right here. I'll All right, so the second generation of the, of the Bratton family. So like I said, William and his wife, Martha, they will have eight children, the youngest of which is Amanda. Uh, obviously, John Sr. will have a son named John Jr., uh, as well as 13 other children. So he has 14 children. Are you children. Of them? Yes. 1826, <laughs> up to this point, he had been living in his father's house uh, with several of his children and his wife. And because his family was growing, he decided he wanted to build a larger home. So in 1826, he constructs the building behind me, which we refer to as the Homestead House. The Homestead House will become the center of John Simpson Bratton Sr.'s plantation. He and his wife Harriet will live here. Uh, there are 14 children. Um, this plantation is going to grow to its height in 1843, around the time of John Sr.'s unexpected death. In 1843, when John passes away, there are 139 African Americans enslaved on this plantation. 
uh, planting and harvesting short and staple cotton. After uh, the cotton fields are uh, that direction, you can go see them after the tour. Uh, the large enslaved population obviously required housing. Uh, we know through census records that there were 20 houses, 20 slave houses on this property, eight of which they chose to uh, cluster these houses in quads, group of four on either side of the homestead house. Four on this side, four on this side. These two closest to us, to my right, your left, are the two original slave houses. They are original. Uh, they It was in ruins and we built it back. These two on this side are reconstructions. They were in ruins and we built it back. There's one still in ruin on this side. There's one that we have preserved in ruin on this side. And if you're doing your math, that's only seven. There is one that is no longer present on the landscape. But based on the layout of this side, we, we have a good idea of where it would have been. But it, it is just simply no longer present on the landscape. Tried to discover the exact foundation of it, but we, we have a good idea of where we fit. The remaining 12 were likely made of wood, and they were likely closer to the agricultural fields. Uh, the enslaved field hands would have lived in those. We think uh, skilled laborers. Uh, we know there's a blacksmith on the property named Adam and his wife, Letty. She was a seamstress. Those are both skilled labor positions. They would have been living in the three fields, most likely. We know there was an enslaved man named Sam. Slave field hands were likely living in those wood houses. Um, I was going to say something else, it slipped my mind. It'll come back in the water. Records indicate one was named Elijah Clark and the other was named Charles Curry. Once the enslaved field hands harvested the cotton, it was then taken to a cotton gin, which we do have on property. You can go see it after the tour. It's a couple hundred yards that way. Um, uh, after the cotton was gin, uh, the gin removes the seeds from the cotton. Uh, it, was, it used literal horsepower. Horses would turn the, the gin. Uh, if you've ever been on a pony ride, it's kind of that idea where they just walked around in a circle all day. Uh, the horses would help power this gin that would remove the seeds from the cotton, at which point that cotton was taken to a press pit uh, where they were con condensed, compressed into 400 pound bales of cotton that were then either shipped north to Charlotte via the railroad that came through here in 1852 or south to Columbia uh, via wagon. We have receipts that show the Brattons paying people, paying the railroad to ship it north and paying people to haul it south via wagon. And this money uh, that the Brattons made off the backs of the enslaved population made them extremely wealthy, which I remembered what I was going to say and I forgot, which is why these buildings are made of brick. People ask me all the time, why are these made of brick? That's not customary for slave houses to be made of brick. Typically it's wood. Uh, just as with the tombstone for Watt, enslavers are not typically going to spend that kind of money on their enslaved. In this case, it's to demonstrate their wealth and social status. Brick is a very labor-intensive material, therefore it is very expensive to make. There is some archaeological evidence to suggest that bricks were actually be being made here on site, which would have brought the cost down a little bit for the Brattons, but primarily they are displaying their wealth. Imagine this road behind you. coming to this property would have to look up at the magnificent house and then they would see that the uh, enslaved buildings, the slave buildings in the house were made out of brick and they were supposed to be impressed by the brat as well, right? Um, I encourage you to enter these slave houses after the tour, uh, specifically this one, uh, which we call the original slave house. Um, you can see fingerprints in the bricks from the enslaved hands that made the bricks and it's likely that the same people that made those bricks were also the people living in those houses. Uh, 
Uh, some of that wealth uh, was used to put some additions on the house. Uh, obviously, originally you didn't have the two wings. The wings were added at some point in the 1850s, as well as the, uh, if you walk around the back, you will see the uh, brick assembly hall that they added at some point in the mid-1850s. Are there any questions about the second generation uh, of the Brattons, John Simpson Sr., his family, uh, the enslaved people, any of this? Before I move on to our third and final period of significance. What is inside the house right now? Right now, I don't think there's any furniture in the house. We've removed them all uh, for preservation. We are in the process of preserving this building as well as the Colonel Bratton house. Uh, we're in the process of drawing up documents with architects and engineers. Uh, it'll go out for bid. We'll hopefully get a contractor to come and do the work uh, and eventually have it open to the public for you guys. Uh, we do have uh, furnishing plans. Uh, part of my job as historian is to work with the staff at Brattonsville to develop a furnishing plan uh, to, to determine what kind of pieces of furniture would have been in this house in 1855. That's the time period we're bringing this house to, 1855. Uh, at this point in history, Harriet would have been a widow for a couple years now. Her husband died in 1843, at which point she was running this plantation. Um, so we're bringing it back to 1855, and we will have it fully furnished. Uh, so right now it's empty, but when it's open to the public, it will be fur fully furnished the way it would have looked if, if, if Harriet was here uh, in 1855. Same thing with the Colonel Bratton house. We're going to bring that back to the way it would have looked in 1839 uh, when it was used as a school. Like I said, some of the wealth was used to make these additions, uh, but John Sr. also used his wealth to make additions to his, his childhood home. He taught his children. There was a, a teacher that lived at the school. Her name was Catherine Ladd. Uh, and then she was followed by a gentleman named Hubert Warner. And he finally uh, last year that that school was in operation uh, How named long Marianne Polk. So there were three different teachers what? over the, uh, the How history long are we of Brad School here? that taught at that school. Know. The and how long are we going to be here? Uh, hmm? How long are we going to be here? Uh, I don't know. Hmm? Check on your watch. Uh, I, I mean, I can look at my watch, but that's not going to tell me the answer to your question. Zora was doing watch. Oh. I don't know. Oh, okay. I wonder if we're ever going to go inside the house. I don't know if we are. I, I, I think they, they were saying the house is closed right now because they're going to preserve it. It would have been really expensive to ship it. Uh, but the Brattons had the benefit of making it on site, right? They didn't have to move it. Did this house have the kitchen inside or did it have an attached kitchen? This, so this this slave structure here is the kitchen. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is the this is the brick kitchen. Great question. Yeah, typically kitchens were outside dryers to avoid fires. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so that that is what this house would have been used for. You see there's a living space upstairs. I speculate with all of these uh, brick slave houses that the people that were working in them were also living there. So your, so your cook would have also been living in, in the house, right? Any other questions? Yes? The best over there, but I think I read the website that's stuck Patriot. Yep, so uh, especially this house. So this house was used uh, in uh, the Patriot, the, the movie with Mel Gibson that came out in 2000. They did filming here in 19... The year prior to the film being released, uh, the biggest scene is the one. It, it's filmed in our assembly hall, the brick assembly hall that was added in the mid 1850s. It's the scene where the big bad British guy, uh, Tavington, he's based on famous for Tarleton, he's walking around a table. One of Mel Gibson's children is hiding under the table, uh, and uh, he like. Looks up. Yeah, that scene was filmed uh, in, in this building. When you say assembly hall, is that the church? I mean, is that... Uh, no, so it would have been more of a, uh, like, a party. Just like a, like, like yeah, together. Did they have a church here also? They did. So the Bratton's were attended the Bethesda Presbyterian Church. They were Presbyterians. Uh, the vast majority of people that settled in this area were Presbyterians. Uh, and their church, if you go down this way uh, to the first road that intersects it, uh, if you take a right, you will get to Bethesda Presbyterian Church. The vast majority of the Brattons attended there, and they are very rare. Uh, oddly enough, if you take this road and take a left instead, you'll see Mount Zion Church. That is an African American church. Quite a few enslaved people that were enslaved on the plantation are buried at Mount Zion. That was established, uh, it was a Brush Arbor church prior to emancipation, but after emancipation, it became an African American church. Um, African Americans attended Bethesda, but they were forced to, obviously, they were segregated, they were forced to stay in the balcony upstairs. Uh, but after emancipation, a lot of the African Americans who attended Bethesda Presbyterian White Church broke off and formed Mount Zion. Um, 
So interestingly enough, yeah, if you, depending on what direction you go, you can see where the white brats are buried and where a lot of African American brats are buried. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, so a lot of this land was leased to sharecroppers uh, after uh, uh, Reconstruction. Uh, the last Brattons leave here in 1950. I should say the last white Brattons leave here in 1950. There are some African American Brattons that remain on the land. The land is leased to sharecroppers in the 1950s. Uh, all this falls into disrepair. It's not until the 1960s uh, that the land starts to get purchased and uh, preserved. Uh, a lot of this land uh, was purchased by um, United States Senator uh, Samuel Mendenhall, uh, and uh, some of the land that way was purchased by IBM manager uh, R. Fisher Drake. Down your way in, you probably saw the Draper Wildlife Preserve. Uh, that is uh, part of this land as well. Draper ended up uh, selling the land to the county. Bratons are still local in this area. Bratons are still local in this area. Uh, we have a very active descendants group, uh, both white and African American descendants groups. And they help us, uh, especially the African American descendants, they help us a lot with our programming when we do our African American events like By the Sweat of Our Brow in September. Uh, uh, by way of the back door. We just opened a new exhibit in the Brick House that you know, talks a lot about African American history. Uh, our descendants groups are very active with us. They're an active participant as we work with them to tell this history. We're not doing it alone. We're working, we're working closely with them. So yeah, very active, active descendants. Group. Great question. Any other questions? drafted. Uh, I, I couldn't begin to tell you. I, all right, to, so to give you another example, we started preservation efforts on the brick house in 2013. Uh, we ended up, uh, preservation uh, ended, we finished it up uh, around 2019, to give you an idea of how long it took us on that. And it is, it's, this is substantially larger. Great. Yes. So he asked, uh, did the enslaved take the last name of their enslaved? Yes, typically, if they have a last name. So if you look at the Bratton's uh, list of enslaved people, they typically just name them by their first name. Some of them did. That's okay. He can't talk. I can't carry my bag and Sarah, you. <laughs> your skirt might be a little bit low because mine's going to be kind of sweaty a lot. I'll hold you. You're going to hold my hand? You're going to hold your hand about it. Sarah, I was actually almost going to film you the whole time. Oh, my God. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'll give you an example. Between 1870 and 1871, for a six-month period, there were 600 beatings and 11 murders perpetrated by the Ku Klux Klan in York County alone. 600 beatings and 11 murders. The 11th person to be murdered in that six-month window was a man named James Williams. He's an African-American that was enslaved uh, on the Bratton plantation. He was actually enslaved at Forest Hall, known today as Hightower Hall. It's uh, about a half mile that direction. Uh, so if you're leaving out today, if you will go that way, uh, you will be able to see, uh, that's John Jr.'s home. Uh, John Sr., he had a son, John Jr., uh, and he built in 1853 a house known as Forest Hall. James Williams was enslaved on that plantation, so he was enslaved by the Bratt. Uh, te uh, technically, he was owned by uh, the neighbors, a guy named Samuel Rainey. 
but Rainey rented James Williams to the Brattons prior to the Civil War. Uh, James Williams actually escapes from the plantation in 1865. He joins the Union Army. He serves in the Union Army for 18 months. He returns to York County in 1866, and he becomes a very active civil rights leader. Very vocal critic of the Ku Klux Klan. Governor of South Carolina appoints James Williams captain of a local state-established militia. These militias were intended to be integrated, but white men did not want to serve with armed black men so the militia was quickly uh, all African American. No. Now, the Klan did not take kindly to this. Look, you can see James yourself. Williams is uh, vocally critical of him. I got it. He is actively campaigning for civil rights, and he is in command of the groups of armed African Americans. I'm men. getting it, sir. Uh, oh my god, that one's so. On May 7th, I'm sorry, March 7th, 1871. Um, a group of Klansmen raid Williams' home, March 7, 1871, early morning hours, and they lynched and murder him. According to uh, the trials that ensued, the Klan trials that ensued, uh, the testimony came out that uh, suggested that James Rufus Bratton, Napoleon Bonaparte's brother, uh, the son of John Simpson Sr., uh, James Rufus Bratton was in charge of those, those two plugs that led that raid against James Williams. York County Coroner is going to come to do an investigation and he brings James Williams' body to the only public space in the area, the Bratton Operating General Store at this brick house. So this house is connected to James Williams. So because of that, we elect to open two exhibits in this space. One is the Bratton Operating yeah. General Store. Oh, yeah. uh, I yeah. heard you take a look at it. We're reproducing yeah, yeah. items. Uh, as a historian, yeah. one of the things I'm doing is meticulously researching the hundreds of different items that would have been on the store shelves and then sending that research to our exhibits department so they can fabricate these items to my specifications and then put them on the walls. Um, so please check that out. And then the adjacent room is an exhibit about reconstruction that discusses the life and legacy of Captain James Williams. This is the he shopped here. We have records to indicate that he was buying things from the store. So he's connected to this building in life, but we know the coroner brought him here after his murder. So he is connected to this building, unfortunately, in death. So we have elected to have an exhibit that discusses reconstruction and focuses on his life and legacy. So please check out that exhibit as well. Uh, this is pretty much the conclusion of the tour. We've looked at all three periods of significance, revolution, antebellum, reconstruction. We are going to actively Lyra, interpret, uh, continue to actively interpret all three of these periods, and hopefully as these other two buildings uh, open up, as we uh, restore them and open them, uh, you can come back and see some active interpretation going on for the other two periods of significance. Uh, any questions? With this door open, support these kids. I mean, they were large families. You know, after their enslaved people were free, I mean, did they get financial hard time? So, so uh, great. I'm glad you asked that question mm -hmm. because I forgot to mention. Uh, uh, a lot of enslaved, it was required uh, that freedmen, these new freed African, newly freed African Americans, it was required by law a lot of times that they sign labor contracts with white people. Uh, if not, they could be uh, considered vagrants. They could violate vagrancy laws and being thrown from jail. So we see a lot of African American people signing sharecropping contracts with white people. A lot of times they're former enslavers. So we know that uh, Harry Bratton has a list of uh, the sharecroppers that were here post the Civil War. Uh, there were about 16 distinct families. A lot of those, uh, their names are also names that show up on enslaved slave records, right? So we know that a lot of the families that stayed to sharecrop were formerly enslaved here on this plantation. So um, did the Brattons hit financial hardships after the Civil War? Everybody, they, they were fine. <laughs> they, they were fine. They, uh, yes, they did, uh, like, like a lot of people did. I mean, the economy was destroyed. Uh, to be completely honest, the economy out here was destroyed. Uh, we see that uh, people don't have just ready cash. So uh, the store, for example, uh, it does continue to thrive. So we, see barter. Uh, we know that people are bringing in goods and produce to barter for other items in the store. So yes, uh, the Brattons did. You know, they 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 struggled like other people. Struggled. There was a lot of struggling going on, uh, not just for the African. Population, of course, for the white population. There was, there was a, a, a big change in economics going on, and the, the war hit the South really hard. The North thrived during the Civil War, the South did not. Um, 
but um, uh, but yeah, no, the store the store did continue to do well even post post Civil War. Like I said, bartering was going on. Uh, they allowed people to buy things on credit. There's evidence that they had a lot of people purchasing things on credit. Um, so, but yeah, great, great, great question, great question. Any other questions? X? Yes. What kind of tree is the hindus that start in the church? You know, that is a question. What kind of tree is it? The decoration of the hindus? About 310. I know, I think we're going to the games, actually. They're a company that's a contractor to make the appropriate kind of glasses. Any other questions? Will you guys uh, have a good rest of your day? Let me know if you have any questions. Yes? When are we going to move on? Yeah, this is the end. <laughs> this is the end. <laughs> yep. so, you can, so you can move on from here and you can go. I encourage you to look at the new exhibits in there. I also encourage you to please fill out a uh, uh, survey. Let us know how we did. Surveys are available at our gift shop. Uh, and check out our gift shop while you're here. There's some wonderful things in there. But please fill out a survey. Uh, let us know how we did. We can't improve unless we know, right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I want to go to the original cabin there. Okay, let's do that. Uh. This guy's pretty funny. All legs are failing. Why don't you want to pull the camera? I want to go to the original slide flippers. Oh. I want to go see the black. Oh, here we go. One more thing to do, and we're gonna do it in just a minute. So maybe about a half hour or so. Cool. And then we're done. Something like that, right? My legs hurt. Games at 3:30. It's like 3:15. Okay. I hope we get to race the parents and I'm not racing. My legs hurt. I was hurt. over at four. Well, well if we get to race the parents, I'm not like, racing. Well, if we race the parents, I'm racing Munson. I'm not racing at all. I don't think you get to race the animals. What? I think you're racing other children. The black. Is behind the original house. So it's across the street behind the house that we built. Okay. Sarah, you want to be the eater with me? Sure, why not we pack it for the big race? Yeah. Okay, it's right. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We need to be the ready, set, go thing. <laughs> It's just been preserved, right? I want to yell at them so they don't get too far. Ahead. Hi. I don't think they know where you are. Okay, here they come. Hey. Who is this to put house supposed to be? Can you remind me of Suffy? Suffy? 
Put, put him in your pocket. You're right in there. Oh my god, are you the creepy right there? Oh, you mean this is jail? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. But if jail. it was, then that window wouldn't have. Can people just jump out the window and leave? No. I'm not going to jump out the window and leave. Were you in our e card? What's <laughs> that here? I'm filming Sarah. I'm still filming you, Sarah. I'm still filming you. No, we went in there. All I can see is your hair right now. Laura, you can actually just stand on this. <laughs> I don't think London's able to stand on you. Hey, we're fine. We're down here. Hey, we're... Okay. Okay. I just had it like this. Body staff. I'm gonna film for a little bit. Blacksmith, blacksmith. I wanna see the blacksmith, blacksmith, blacksmith. I wanna see. Oh, what is that? Blacksmith? No? Mm -hmm. No, that's the sewing. Oh, I wanna see the sewing. Let's go see the sewing part, you guys. Hey, Mama. There's a sewing thing over there. I want to see that. Come on. I, I want to go sew. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Come on, <laughs> I want to sew. Here, you can you can hold the camera while we sew. I think. Yeah. And she goes, oh, there's some people 
Uh, okay, so yeah. now you want to put it on here like this. Um, pull it through like that, see? And then watch my feet. Put that foot down and put it back through again, okay? Try that. Is that North Charlotte? Yeah, it's Did I say it? Did I remember? You have to sit down, put your feet on the pedals all the way back. No, back further. Back, back here. Back, back here. Back here. Um, Back here. The this might be not set up set. quite right for you. Know, might have two short <laughs> arms. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Now try moving one foot up and one foot down. There we go. And now put it oh, through. There is yarns. To yarns. Die for. There is one up there. Called That's that. it. Yarns to die yeah. for. Okay. Okay. The one the yarns etc. I think is the one that's really good. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Now put the other foot up and the other foot needs to go yeah, down. Yeah, yarn put the down needs to go up. And they're really good. So, and they would be able to, because some of them are yeah. weavers too. Maybe you just, your feet are just yeah. a little yeah. so too small. Well, thank you for doing your beautiful work. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. Just to see. Please don't. Please don't. So, why don't you let somebody else try? Do it. Is there a good one? Where's your group? She really is. Oh, um, yeah. That's you. Good job. Oh, the, what, the weaving? What is <laughs> Don't touch that, sweetie. Don't touch that. That's, that's a spinning wheel, and that's not something, you know what, you can do. Did you get a chance to card some fleece over there? Did you do that? You can go card the fleece. Go over there and card the fleece. Oh, excuse me, this, is, this is the, really the hands-on activity that we have for kids. So come on over here. We've got, we got fun no, carding over here for me to show everybody. So what we got here, come on over here, if you haven't been over here yet, come on over here. I'll tell you about what we're doing. They're from 10 to 18. So what we're doing here is we're carding some wool. So this is wool from our sheep. These are the Gulf Coast native sheep that are right over there in the pasture. And this is their wool. So what we do every spring, or take two, you guys take both is uh, we shear the sheep, which means we cut off their wool, we give them a haircut, and then, yeah, and then we wash it. How many do we have here? One, two, three. You go, give it a shot. Right here, do you want to try? You already know my name. Yep, so this is wolf bar sheep. What we're doing is we're prepping it so it's ready for the um, spinning wheel. That's the washed wool. So that that's, this is what people would do in order to prep the wool for the spinning wheel. So what you want to do, you got enough on your right now. So just pull, you got to pull it back and forth. And what you're doing is aligning all the fibers. You're fluffing it up and you're removing any last, yep, any last vegetal materials. So you, let me see. Like that. this, Sarah. You got it. Just a little bit. Let me put this in. In olden days, do people have pockets? Um, yeah. I have pockets in my dress. Oh. Yeah, here. Here you go. Like this. There you go. And you want to pull it, you want to get the fibers nice and aligned. Like, let me see that one. That one I think looks about right. Keep going. Okay, so this one, you see, this one's nice and aligned. I, I, you can do more if you want. You're good? Can we pick out the Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's still one. Do you need anything? No, okay. We're just, we're just, uh, doing the end here. Yeah, I see. You're getting there. So, you now, once you get it aligned, you have to flip it. And then do it again. You gotta do this like four or five times, and you end up with some. Oh no, you gotta flip it and do it again four or five times because you want something that looks like. You see that red stuff that um, Miss Pam has over there in her hands? That's what you want to end up with is something that looks like that. I mean, obviously not red, but um, something long and light and fluffy with all the fibers aligned so that it's ready to go into the spinning wheel. So it takes a really long time, and I do this myself for my spinning. It usually takes me, you know, between 15 to 20 minutes to prepare a roll off.
across the street. If you want to see the blacksmith, I would maybe they, they think told about us heading the over there. The Yes, the candle making is um, that There's direction. There's candle making? Yeah, yeah, you guys, if you want to do all those activities, you, we better get moving, because right, what time is it now? We must be getting, uh, we must be getting It's 325. 325, yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, we got to go to the sports club. Especially if we want to make a toothbrush, we better hurry. Yeah. Let's go to the sports club. Any of the fun. Oh, we don't want to miss any of the fun. fun activities here. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll do candle dipping, dipping first. Candle dipping it's is a long all line for candles. I'm going to do candle dipping. Okay. okay. All right, well, we better hurry. It's a long Come on. Let's do. Wait, oh. oh. I kind of want to go so see, do the oh. blacksmith. The blacksmith is across the street. Well, I'm with you guys. Yeah. Blacksmith. Okay. Blacksmith first. I can't forward this huh? anymore. We're going to have to leave it. But Feel this. Okay, so this is the horse. And this is your weft. Exactly. You know what? Sometimes people use this for their point shoes instead of pants. They use laying the wool. Yeah. 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 It's across the street. Come on. I think that's the blacksmith. <laughs> He's got an anvil. <laughs> what you think? I like it. I like it. <laughs> like I thought they would let people do this too. Oh, it probably takes a lot of training to do this kind of work. What's up, sweetheart? Said about this tall. How long can you keep butter? Can you make some butter? So you you some keep it cool. You can keep it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go up okay. and down and up yeah. and down. You have to keep doing that until all so the milk goes you're, away. Like if you're getting it straight butter. from the cow, you know, after it, it separates, you take the cream off and that's what you turn. Mm -hmm. So what after you turn it, you would have huh? to wash that. What are we making? So, butter. Butter. And so after you wash it, Ooh, just, some cream you just in wash there. it until your From water the is clear. And you know, you got all the and down, cream and out, and, and that way it won't sour. It'll turn into oh, I'll see. You just keep it cool. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. She said this is a small <laughs> butter churn. That's a small one. There are a lot bigger than that. Can you put my Let's see, which I think this is the one that's ready. Oh, I can't remember what you said. Yeah, this one's almost ready. It's about halfway there. You can still see the liquid moving a little bit. Wow. Yeah, mine's Did you wanna... the yeah. yeah, when it starts to stick, but you want to get all that liquid out. So this, when you start fill it, you're about halfway there. As long as you see it splashing. And you still gotta go. <laughs> all right, so I'm like my grandmother's the big one. We would just all day long take turns what is just this? turning. Wow. That's you gotta keep your jar. So that's what you're using. It's called a dash. So that over there is the finished. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's kind of soft. It's kind of soft because yeah. you know it's sitting down. Yeah. yeah. So. And and they don't like to stay once they gonna, see the butter. Are we gonna make something with the butter? No, we're gonna feed this butter to our pigs. Okay. Remember <laughs> the little Johnny cakes that the other lady showed us in the cabin with the fireplace? When we make those, we can make homemade butter to go on them. Yeah. <laughs> And we yes, can just have a whole feast. Yes. <laughs> right I'm now. already thinking Good about stuff. it. Because <laughs> butter makes everything good, right? Yeah. <laughs> I said, if you got butter and bacon, you're good, good to go. 
it's good to go. That's all you need. I don't like butter on pancakes. You don't? You know what else we could put on earlier? We could put a big dollop of homemade butter and then honey. Ugh. That's what we're gonna do. Your mom is <laughs> <hate. laughs> I'm just, uh, not my mom. I'm, I'm just an auntie. Oh, auntie. Well, your auntie <laughs> doesn't even eat. She's my mom. She's your mom? Yeah. My mom is right there with the thing on her. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, my, that's my sister. <laughs> that's my sister. <laughs> Precious. Next she time. Is. What's, your sister? What's your name? Zora. Zora. I love Sarah. it. What's your sister's mm -hmm. name? Sarah. What's her, her, her name is Vesper. Vesper. Oh, My name is Kira. My name is Kenya. Kenya. Nice to meet you. Yeah, this is Miss Diane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same letters. That's right. Look at you. Bonnie's See, that's what you want. Bonnie, take your lid off so we can see. Take your lid off and let's see how it looks. Yeah, look at that. Look at that butter Bonnie made. Check that you out. You still got some liquid though. Let me see. Yep. See, it's still moving. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, I see in my shadow. Oh, look yeah. at that. Yeah, wow. Bobby. Oh, see how, how she made hers? Yeah. Big. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. See, it's not that much you made. No more liquid. That's kind of looking like slime. Let me see. Like yeah. slime? <laughs> <laughs> see. Did you want to go over oh, there and wow. see the finished butter in the bowl? No. What it looks like? I have it right now. Because it looks it's different it's than the butter I bought. The rest of yeah. yeah. I love you. Now we want to do some more. Now I made butter for you, Yeah. <laughs> 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 One of my favorite things to do. Because we made some of the mason jars like a bowl, yeah. 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 and you just shake uh -huh. it. It was so fun. Yeah, and yeah. it yeah. tastes really good. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna press. I haven't seen the blacksmith yet. Oh, so, yeah, he's down there making it and talking about. Yeah. You well, y'all need a nail or anything? Huh? You would, if you need a nail, you have to call a blacksmith. And you have to make it. Because and back then they didn't have a load. And guess what? Yeah. I yeah. think they should. Yeah. You should probably, since you're near them, I think you should give them this idea. But they should like carve wood into the shape of a toothbrush, and then they should put straw for the bristles. That's pretty. Good. That's. I bet you that's how they make it. You know we'll have, have to do. tell our woodworking guys across the street to do that. <laughs> I thought that's what they actually did. That it probably is. And we'll have to use the drill to poke the holes for the bristles. Yeah. Yeah. Make butter? Butter? They had to do it by hand. You just go up and down and up, up and, and down. And you just do this for Start two hours. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but if you were using this one, it would be a two hours. <laughs> you see the butter that was made over there? That looks like mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to check on mine. And you just would be oh, so good. Good mashed potatoes up over time. time. Unscrew the top. Check it out. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Look at this picture. I see. For years and years and years. Hey, y'all know what you are, friends. They say, here. Here you are. I do sound all of it. So the blacksmith would have made you stuff for this property or to sell? Well, it depends on where he was located. Farms and stuff, plantations and stuff like that. They could have had a smaller blacksmith set up because being in a rural area, there wouldn't have been a town close by for them to go and get things from a blacksmith. So many times they would they would have their own set up. And, that, and the person that did the blacksmith, he could be one of the owners, but he could also could have a slave. He could have an indigenous servant that actually did the blacksmith and who had learned to trade at some point in time. And he could have purchased that person. Uh, indentured yeah, service for folks that were coming pay for that passage to come to the cause. Send the candle so they, they making. They may work for a, a person that paid for them to come here until they worked that payment off. And okay. so they could use people like that. But they, on the plantation okay. farm, they would be more or less making um, things they did. Here. They, they, they could have made stuff for neighbors if they didn't have stuff as well. Alright, is it candle making time? Candle making! Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah. What do you think I Oh, it's, I think it's time for the games if they're starting at 3.30. We're late. We're late. I think they're running to the race. They're racing to the race. <laughs>
guys are over there. I think oh, you have to ignore I think you have to ignore it. Alright, so oh, there goes the egg. I think you so, cannot eat the egg for it. Well, I think you just don't let it fall. Don't let it fall is a point. So there we go. Spoon? Spoon small. 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 Spo